Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. With event sourcing, there are two issues that I see come up over and over again that cause a lot of pain and they shouldn't have to. And they all stem from bad modeling. Find any video that I have about event sourcing, go through the comments, you're gonna find a lot of them that are the same thing of, well, I have my event stream that you told me to define and I append news events, all these new events for all these changes of facts that things that have happened in my system what do I do if I have this event stream that never ends? And I get it because the example that I'll use in some of my videos is related to a warehouse where you're shipping product, receiving product, and this could go on forever. So there's really no end in sight of, okay, well, when does this event stream end? There's just this endless number of uh, events that are being added. Same thing you could think about of a bank account and there's all these just uh, different transactions, your debits and credits, those are your events. Unless you close the account, this can just go on infinitely. And if you're familiar with event sourcing, you're probably yelling snapshotting. You want to use snapshots, right? Well, that's not actually the first thing I'd be jumping to. Before I get into modeling streams, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context and fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, Check out the link in the description. And while snapshots are a solution to a long event streams, I'll have a link in the description if you're unfamiliar with what they are, you can view that video. The real crux of the issue here is do they need to be? Most kind of things, whether it be your warehouse or your bank account, actually have a life cycle. Most things that you're actually gonna model in terms of the events and kind of the flow of what it is, actually has a life cycle. Meaning there's some beginning, there's some stuff kind of work in progress, things that happen, and then there's some end to it. A simple example of this, as you can think of, is let's say like a support ticketing system. It's a really simple example that I like to use is that a ticket's opened, there is some pending state where you're working on what the item is, say dealing with the customer, there's some interactions, This could that pending state could um, go longer, there are obviously events in between. Something get resolved, there's a period of time where, okay, it's resolved, and if there's no other interactions, then it's closed, it's done. There's a beginning, there's an end, there's a life cycle. And yes, for example, like our bank account has when it's open and when it's closed, but there's a lot of transactions in between. That's still a problem, right? Yes, it is. The same thing with your warehouse, where you start to receive a product, you have all these different events, and then eventually you discontinue that product. And there's all these events in between. That's still a problem. Yes, but you still don't need to have a really long event stream. And that's because there's natural checkpoints in life cycles that give you really a new starting point. As the example in a warehouse, let's say the start of our stream is we have a product received at 10 and we're keeping track of the quantity on hand here. We receive five more products the next day, so we're at 15. So there's 15 products physically on the shelf. Then we ship out uh, six products. So now we're actually at nine is our quantity on hand. Then we do something maybe the next day where we do a stock count, where the physics, somebody actually is physically counting the items on a shelf or within the particular warehouse to verify what the number in our system says we have is actually what we have. So we realize, oh, okay, we should be at nine, but one of the products is damaged or lost. So we're updating our system and doing an adjustment saying, no, really, the actual quantity is eight. Now it might sound crazy if you're writing software because you think of everything as being digital, but in the physical goods world like this, the real point of truth of how many products you have isn't what your system says. It's actually physically what's in the warehouse. So doing these stock counts, doing that product adjustment is actually a checkpoint. That's really kind of the end of one stream and the starting of the next. Another way to kind of think about this and realize where the start and the end is, is based on what I call like cold and hot data. So if you think about any system, you may have historical data that's really cold, meaning that your application, nobody's really accessing it that often. It's kind of like almost could be archived really. It's something historical, it's not really accessed that much. But then there might be something that's like fairly recent where somebody needs to go look up some data or change some something. If we think about an event stream, it could be just reading that event stream, not necessarily even appending anything to it. Or maybe just if there is something being appended, it's very few and far between. And then there's kind of that hot data or those hot streams where, yes, there's a lot being accessed to it for read purposes as well as for write purposes. But the reason I bring this up is because this is happening all around us. A great example of this is accounting. It operates on an annual cycle. There's a period there. It has a beginning and an end. So that means that you can model with the period in mind. So for example, with the chart of accounts, it's not like that's what you're modeling and you have all these transactions within it. 
really how you're defining your streams, how you're modeling this is the period, say that yearly period for the chart of accounts. It's a combination of the two. That's what's really giving you kind of that limited bound of start and end. And one of the traps you can get into why you think you have really long event streams is because the events that you're modeling are really built on CRUD, not on workflow. Is an example here, an event of stop change. And I'm using the example here of like, say a shipment. So we have a warehouse, something was shipped out. We're tracking that shipment. Okay, something changed, the stop change. What change? Did the location change? Did the date time change? The freight, what actually changed? Now you may be saying, yeah, sure, we could have a Delta, but okay, even then, why did it, what actually happened that caused the stop change? That's what I call CRUD sourcing or property sourcing, because that's really what you're doing is you're just kind of getting data changes. Often you think of like CDC, change data capture tools doing this and kind of building out events based on the data change. But it doesn't really give you any idea of what changed or why it changed because you have no idea. You kind of have to infer it and really you're not capturing the workflow because there's a very big distinction. Stop change. Nobody in your domain has any clue of what that means. That's purely technical data change capture type thing that you're talking about versus arrived shipper. This is very specific that anybody within kind of that shipping domain would know exactly what you're talking about. The vehicle arrived at the shipper to pick up the freight. This is very specific, a part of workflow. There is workflow, a part of a shipment. So it's not a series of stop changed events, rather it's workflow events that give you kind of that life cycle that we were looking for that beginning and end. So it's dispatched, arrived shipper, loaded, departed, arrived consignee, delivered. There's a series of events that give us that beginning and end, that life cycle. So to avoid a long event streams, which is easily the comment I get the most or concern about event sourcing is focus on workflow events. And that's what's actually in your stream. Even if you do do that, you may end up with streams that have a lot of volume in them. They have a lot of events. The ways to deal with that potentially are just to make them bound. That could be by time. It may not be by something like a year period, like I was talking with accounting. It could be something shorter that's even an hour or a day, given your context in your domain, and if it naturally fits that way. There's also events that are natural checkpoints, if you will, that can kind of be the end in starting to your next stream. There's a lot of ways to kind of deal with this. The focus of all of it is model the actual business processes that you're actually trying to implement using events to begin with. And yes, use snapshotting as an optimization, but like I said, don't just jump there. Look at things that I've talked about to kind of limit those stream lengths. And if you have, then yes, resort to snapshotting if you need to. Now get in the comments and let me know your tales from the trenches on how you're building out event streams and kind of the domain that you're in and some of the big aha moments you had about how you're modeling. I think it can help people a lot just giving different examples. Get in the comments. And thanks to everybody that supports my channel and joins my channel. The link's in the description on how you can join if you want to support my channel. You also get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.